Hello and welcome back to Green Hill Junction. Uh, so the, the last video you've seen of the layout was uh, the start of the village scenery and one of the things that I put in um, was dry stone walling. Uh, now that was a bit of an experiment that I was doing to try and basically make it myself. The stuff you can get online um, is very expensive and isn't very flexible either. Um, I need mine to go around a curve because I make life complicated for myself by putting curves in everywhere. Um, I've seen a method online, I can't remember who did it, so apologies if you're watching this and I don't um, give you a mention. But they made it with kitty litter and um, some sort of, I think it was like a PVA plaster mix. And it, it did turn out good, um, but then you had to paint it and weather it and all that. And, I just can't be bored doing that. So I came up with my own method. I think it turns out pretty good. Um, so I'll show you how to do it and um, let me know what you think, basically. So first of all, things that you'll need. Um, so I am using um, leftover corks. This is the three mil cork that I used for the, the track bed. I've got loads of this left. It's also obviously very flexible. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm cutting it into one and a half centimeter tall strips, which I believe will equate to just about five foot, uh, which is quite tall for a dry stone wall, but I'm using this to separate obviously the, the village from the, the railway. So I, you'd need a higher wall, I guess. Um, what you also need is gray paint, so you can buy it or you can mix black and white, which I did to uh, make the gray. Uh, as a basically a base colour uh, because you don't want the brown of the, the cork showing through. Um, for the stones I managed to get this from Hobbycraft that is basically a tub of small stones. I think that was about £6. And you'll need the forever reliable PVA uh, and a paintbrush. So uh, all you need to do, oh and uh, I find a, a foil plate helps to catch the stones and you'll see why. So what we'll do is I'll get the majority out of the way. I'm just starting this. Um, it does take a while this, because uh, what you need to do is you need to do one side, let it dry, do the other side, let it dry, and then do the top and let it dry. Um, so it's not a quick one this, but you know, I think it's pretty decent. So first things first is, get the glue on and be pretty generous with this because it takes a fair bit to stick the stones so like I say do one side at a time and if you're doing a long strip like this just uh, do a bit at a time so the glue doesn't go off get that out of the way right next take your stones and it doesn't work if you just tip it on and hope for the best. And um, what you're having to do is you're having to kind of sprinkle it on and work a piece at a time. So that's why you've got the plate to just catch everything that misses. So try and sprinkle it on so you've only got like one stone. You don't want a pile of stones. You want it to, you know, look like a wall. So this is going to be the side. So it'll be one, one stone on top of another. And the beauty of dry stone walls is they are quite random, so you don't need to be uber, uber neat with your placement of the stones, but you do obviously need to make sure that every stone is stuck into the glue. And it, yeah, like I said, it's not a quick process, this. Um, and it can be fiddly, and you will end up with stones sticking to your fingers, and you'll be thinking, why on earth did I do this? Trust me, it's worth it. And you'll see that it's just falling off. So once you get a bit on, just gently press it with your finger or your thumb. Again, you will get stones sticking to you. It's just to try and smooth it out into one level. And then it comes off. Just <laughs> try and pick up a stone and replace it. Because you want... The reason it's painted grey is so it doesn't look too odd with all uh, or any gaps because you will have gaps. So you'll end up with something like that. It looks a mess right now, but trust me, it gets better. There are a few gaps on that for me to cover. Try and keep it as flat as possible because until the glue sets, um, the stones will just fall off. 
as I'm doing a very good job of just now. Um, so I'll get cracking on with that um, and then I'll show you it once it's dried. Okay, so this is the finish you're trying to achieve when you're doing this. Um, very difficult to show on camera because it's a lot of manipulation of the stones, moving them about a few millimetres to try and cover the gaps and generally just trying not to stick too many of the stones to your hands. So you can see that the majority of the, the cork is covered um, but you can also see why it's important to paint it grey. I'm not using any anything to sort of simulate a mortar. To be fair, our true dry stone wall doesn't have any mortar in it. Um, but then the, the stones are all cut so they, they fit together tightly. Um, so it is important that you try and uh, that you do paint the, the cork grey. Um, so that's all my bits done on one side. I will let that dry overnight. I know PVA dries quicker than that, but I like to leave it to dry overnight. Um, and then I'll flip it over and I'll do it exactly the same the other side. Um, and then I'll let that dry. And then once that's done, I'll come back and I'll show you um, what to do to get the, uh, the top dressing on. Um, so, speak to you soon. Okay, that's uh, both sides of the, the cork stuck with the stones. Uh, these are still quite fragile, so you can't really like, you know, throw them about because the stones will fall off. Um, they do retain some flexibility. It's good. Uh, and the one thing I forgot to mention was when you're doing the stones, make sure that they stay within the width of the cork because obviously you need one side flat to stick down and one side flat for what we're going to do next which is basically dress the top uh, now the dry stone walls round where I stay they've all got quite a neat topping to them um, with stones lined up so we're going to try and uh, do that now it doesn't matter what side you do to it if you've got a straight bit like this however I do have some curved bits to fit on a small slope so obviously I need to dress it that side not that side otherwise it's all going to go horribly wrong um, what I find best for this is one of these wee uh, precision glue bottles you can get off Metcalf and if you just take the sort of precision nozzle off your left with a reasonably small um, thing so it really is as simple as just put a bead of glue on once the glue comes out, again be quite generous with this. And then you just take stones and try and place them in a row without sticking them to your fingers. Sometimes tweezers come in handy for this, but, but then they just end up sticking to the tweezers as well and I just find it's easier to do it with the, your fingers. Again, you kind of got to get it in place and leave it, otherwise it sticks to your fingers, it moves about and yeah, it just ends up in a bit of a mess. So I, you're looking for something that looks like that. All right, I'm going to crack on with that because that's going to take me ages. Um, these are also handy if you happen to have any gaps. Um, I've already filled in most of mine, so you can literally just uh, you know put a wee dot of glue in a gap and drop a stone in, and it covers it up. So. Really handy wee thing. Uh, right, so I'm, I'm going to get on with doing the, these top stones and then we'll have a, a finished wall and I'll put them in place. So I'll back in a bit. Right, there you go. That's the wall sections finished. Yeah, they're just drying a little bit more. I had to patch a few gaps again, which is why you see the odd little white bit of PVA. Um, but that's really what you're, you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, without actually 
chipping stones and getting them to fit together, I think that's the best you can really hope for. Yeah, there's gaps, but the effect is there. And if you come back to this sort of distance, I think it really does look quite effective. It looks like a good old dry stone wall that you'd find in the countryside. And I've put the, the tender of uh, Cockin in the North just at the back there so you get an idea of the scale. So it just just covers the the undercarriage, I suppose you would call it. So Yeah, really, really quite pleased with that. So I'm going to leave the, the PVA that's been uh, patched to dry and then uh, we'll take it over to the village side and start installing it. Right, welcome back. Uh, so the big moment, um, the fitting of the walls and seeing how they look on the layout. Uh, so I've already fitted this side bit just because it was just a little bit to take in that, that slope there. Um, and fortunately the way I have designed it and the fact that the baseboard is quite flat, all we need to do is take our precision glue thing again and just put a big bead all the way along this bottom. Again, don't be shy with the glue. Oh, and any more spill that's going to be here, I'll uh, I'll cover up with some scenery anyway. So I've got one of my biggest coaches here because there's a slight bend. So I want to make sure that the coaches don't crash off the wall. Just going to marry it up on the edge there. The PVA is it doesn't stick straight away so you can manipulate it about. And just run the coach to make sure that there's plenty of clearance. Clearance out. Right, easy as that. Last bit. Now, what you, what you will find, I'll try and get this in focus, is that you've got, you can see there's a couple of stones just hanging over the edge there. Now, they're obviously going to affect the join at the end. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just but I'll look at the other end. Now the other end's better, so just marry them up. All right, that's better. So again, big bead of glue. I was going to remove those two stones, but then I realised not the two ends. So I might as well try the other end. You just heard that there, but a stone fell off <laughs> as if just to prove that these are fragile. Yep, there we go. Walk away on the other side. clearance now. Well, there you go. Dry stone wall fitted. I'll just uh, I'll bring out the tripod and down. Now personally I think that looks pretty spot on. Okay focus here we go. I 
if I bring the coach in. I think that's going to be a really nice view, watching a train go by through the level crossing. And I've obviously got, I've got more to fit around there. So, uh, got a wee bit of sticking to do. So, that's, that's a big job in the village scene done. Um, let me know what you think. I said at the start that this was going to be after the village scene, but the village scene is taking considerably longer than I planned, so this is um, before the village scene video now. I'll put this one out. But yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, any comments, good or bad or otherwise, subscribe to keep up with, to date with the channel. I'm trying to um, get on with as much scenery stuff as I can now. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers.